I'm sorry, this might be controversial. I think that's the most ugliest bag ever. Hi everyone, this is Cindy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the bags that I've had more than 10 years ago that it was so popular back then but no longer popular today. Have you got any bags that you, you no longer use but you loved it back in its heyday? If you do, please share them in the comments section down below and I would love to hear from you. We might have something similar. The bags that I really truly loved and used so much in the days that they were so popular, they were really hard to get. They are, there you go, you can see that both of them are large in size and uh, this one, maybe quite a few of you have this one. This is the Celine Trapeze bag in the three trail different colours like the royal blue, the black and the beige on the side and with a shoulder strap with all the gold hardware. This one is from Loi Wei. This is the Amazonia bag and this is in the fuchsia red pink but I think due to the lighting it looks like more red than fuchsia but in reality this is fuchsia red. So these bags I used to use them quite heavily almost you know with any opportunities that I, sw I do swap them. I do swap my bags uh, on a weekly basis so you can see that I have used this quite a lot especially on the handles this low way bag they got quite darkened but still it holds its shape and the leather is super soft and the shape still holds it you can see the metal studs on the foot they're still quite nice and shining all the hardware is still nice and shining this one is in palladium and uh, with a little lock with a little um, cloth shade for the keys and uh, with a secured hook on the side with this in the silver palladium hardware and also with two zips. Um, the, the only complaint of this bag that is when you open the zips because due to the shape it curves down a kind of like it drops down into the rectangular angle at the corner you have to hold it, hold the side to zip it otherwise it is in, impossible to pull the zip up so that's the only complaint that I've had of this bag so back in those days these larger size bags I say back in those days it was 2012, 2013, 2014 and then since then the smaller bags started to creep up and then I think it has been dominant everyone's wardrobe uh, in the past decade I haven't used this bag for quite a number of years so, but I never got rid of them because for low way bags in this particularly colour combination and the size, when the smaller bags are so popular and these sort of large size bags that just have very, very little resale value. So I wouldn't really want to sell these for like three or four hundred pounds and then just for the sake of getting rid of it because I know that fashion is a circle, it comes back and comes in is like a merry-go-round. So I think 10 years later, 12 years later and uh, bigger bags are coming back. Um, so I will start to use these bigger bags again. But the thing is with this colour, I'm not sure I used to like like really bright colored bags but I think I might get this take it to a handbag spa and get the color changed or I maybe just do it myself and uh, if I do I might film it so I can show you the progress how I change the color of this bag I think more likely I will do it myself but I'm not certain yet because um, the zip is in the fuchsia color as well but I'm not sure how to color the zips so if you have any tips on how to color the zips and then please let me know I would love to hear it so these big bags are very practical if you use them as work bags because you can hold a pads, you can hold a small laptop, 12 inch definitely, and you can still ha can hold a um, makeup bag and a spare pair of shoes and a phone charger. So tons of room for these bags. And also the only thing with these ones, this is the older model. It doesn't have a shoulder strap, but it goes easily over the arm. 
you can see there's such a big drop there it's about 18 17 centimeter drop so you can go over any arms i still love this bike and even though i paid only just about over a thousand pounds for it but still back then it was quite expensive I'm not sure how much they are these days though you weigh brought back loads and loads of the smaller versions of this bike so I suppose this is one of their classic bikes therefore I'll, I'm going to revive it and then start using them again because you can see that the side design looks like the roll bike is the Margo bike and then hold it under the armpit so it can be quite chic and stylish when I store my bags, I have loads of these bubble wraps, so I just stuff them in and then to keep the shape of the bag. So you can see without the bubble wraps that they just collapse a little bit. But if the back, the, the bottom still holds its shape, but if I want to hold it like this, like all the fashionistas do, and then it becomes a very modern bag. So yeah, I think I will change this into a darker color. I think most likely to be black and uh, to get this back on the scene again to make sure that I use it, love it and then still staying in my wardrobe because when I buy something I never tend to return any purchases unless it's really bad, it doesn't fit me. I always love buying something, own it and appreciate it, use it and uh, have it all the time that in my wardrobe where it becomes part of me, part of my life, become, becomes part of those treasured memories that when I was using this bag, I'm not sure why this is sounds such a like, oh yeah is it? The bag provides so many memories but if you are a bag lover, bags do provide really good Good memories because usually we buy a bag where there's a birthday, it's an anniversary or maybe a special moment that you achieved something at work in your career and so it's just something that we want to celebrate with a bag if you're a bag lover and obviously and um, we're not having a I'm not a trust fund baby, I earned every penny myself through hard work but the thing is we're not like going out to buy a bag every other month aren't we? like costing thousands of pounds these days especially so yeah bags do provide memories and happy really happy memories so because you worked hard for it and you deserve it and then it's something that you would treasure and you would love and when every time you look at it it brings the memory back so yeah i love this bag so this is something that i still wouldn't want to get rid of it and i want to reusing it so that's the message of today's video. It's definitely, it's not a regret. It's not one of those things, oh, I regret of buying this, I regret of buying that. Yes, I might, I do have a couple of regrets, but however, I normally do a lot of extensive research before I buy anything. And then when once I'm sure at least 80% satisfied or more, and then I take the plunge. Otherwise I will just like, yeah, no, I'm not buying it. I'd rather not have it instead of every time when, when I look at it, it's just something that I don't really like. So yeah, and this is something that not that's not the case with this bag. So I love it and treasure it, going to use it, but I'm going to maybe change the color. Do you think I should change the color of this bag? Or do you think I should just keep this fuchsia red? Let me know if you think I should change the color of this bag or not. The other bag is this Celine Trapeze. And uh, if um, you're following me, I've posted this on the um, short as well as in the community. Um, I put, posted a note in the community um, section. On YouTube I was this is something that is back then the trapeze bag and also the um, it was so popular and those these two bags are the one of those two very very popular bags because I had to pre-order and I got this from Selfridges and uh, I have to order it and then pick it up like a week later and uh, when I picked up I, I received a message that said you must be here in two hours and uh, you know otherwise the bag is going to be offered somewhere else so yeah I did get it and then um, this bag I've used so much I've used travel with this work and uh, oh so many again good memories of this bag I love 
always love a royal blue also black is one of my favorite colors also the beige so this is the color combination back then they have the all leather black in this model and this is the I'm not, I'm not sure whether this is having different size or not but yeah there is um just this size i think i believe the blue is in a suede leather you can, you can see it's a suede leather the rest are just like smooth calf skin the, on the back there is no zip this, for this one because this is the first release they didn't have the zip i think i believe later versions they do have a zip pocket at the back and i love the handle i also love the shoulder strap and this is such a good bag and it drops just at the waist area you have to open it is that just pull that down and then twist that little part there and then the flap opens up and then there is a um, zip there oh you can see i still have the dust bag there inside there is a, a uh, what do you call it it's a pocket but without the zip oh yeah at the front there is a zipped up compartment but this one i've never really used the, this zip compartment but i suppose it would be a good place to, to keep valuables in there and because Celine was one of the brands that I went for back in the do in the days that when I started to buy designer handbags, I just find it is a, such a classic French brand. And then the material they use, it's just so good, really great quality. You can see that for ten more than ten years old bag, the hardware still lovely and shining, haven't been tarnished at all and this all the way around it just yes obviously there's wear and tear there's scratches but a bag is supposed to be used and not to be worshipped on the shelf so therefore I, i'm not really fast if there are some scratches these are the i even have the receipt suffrages <laughs> Wow, so this was from 2011. Wowzer, can't believe it. 4th of December 2011. So this bag is almost 15 years and I paid £1,150. Back so then, loads of bags, if you just spend like about over a £1,000, you can get a really, really decent bag. It's not like these days you have to spend more than two thousand pounds in order to get a so-called a decent designer bag because i mean look at all the louis vuitton bags that they're all like uh, the canvas monogram canvas they're all approaching um two thousand pounds mark but this one is all leather really great quality leather and just over a thousand pounds this is the price like 15 years ago about 14 15 years ago yeah 13 years ago so it's it just i just find the prices these days are just too crazy i'm sure you know a lot of you sharing the same view as me but the thing is i always say to my friends that if i haven't started my back journey um back then i wouldn't be able to afford half of whatever I have today so uh, I wouldn't really just be able to afford it but the thing is affordability is not an issue but the thing is with the let's having a venting session um, as well for example I just find uh, that the fashion the, the bag brands like Louis Vuitton releasing this inside out never full bag but I mean I'm sorry this might be controversial this is like I think that's the most ugliest bag ever to be released this year I mean the model um, for the bag it, it was Sophie Turner I mean she's a stunning girl and she looks beautiful the bags doesn't look you know looks great on her but for the day-to-day -day, we use that bag it has such a wide opening on the top there's no zip and uh, there is just like this massive shoulder strap and then you sling it around you with that bright yellow bright red color i just i just there's not one thing that i like about that bag i just you know i just rather prefer that they just do a different bag instead of just trying so hard to do this like inside out yes the color combination is just not really great but i mean i don't really like that sort of design that they're charging you for like 1700 pounds for it it just i just find it 
really hard to comprehend that they charge that sort of price for a bag that just like plastic basically and uh I'm sorry, as much as I lo love Louis Vuitton, you know, from my earliest videos, you know, with my Louis Vuitton bag reviews, my little, um, um, like, Slags SLG collections. I love Louis Vuitton as a brand, but I just don't really love that late releases of their bags. You know, as me, I always love their um, epi leather and uh, bags, but I haven't read, I only just got one monogram canvas bag. Um, but the thing is, I just, I just don't really agree that people charging amount, that amount of money for a bag. I mean, I remember those days when I first got my first Louis Vuitton bag, I think it was 2006. I sold that bag on eBay. I sold it only for like 500 pounds. I'm sure that lady bought from me. She really treasures it. I think it's called the City Bag. I can't remember the, 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 the name of it, but yeah, it's like a double strap, big and square and, you know, structured. That was my first Louis Vuitton bag. That was only like 595 and then the Never Fall, I remember back in those days, and also the um, the luggage bag, and it was only just three, four hundred pounds, because they did just nothing, cost not that much at all. And these days, they're just charging nearly two grand for a plastic coated canvas bag for that amount of price. And then it's not going to help you to do anything. But, you know, with the bright yellow, bright red, okay, fair enough, you can say that. Okay, use that on holiday, inside out, looks quite bright and, you know, cheerful, nice colors. But if you want to use it in, in London on the underground, being theft, is a great problem in the city at the moment you know there's no security there's no um zips for that bag with a big opening with this shoulder strap sling open it don't, i just don't feel that bag is very safe at all but i did have a video about how to anti-theft for your bags so you can watch the video here if you haven't and then that gives you some um idea that how you can minimize or you know uh, this problem but i still i just don't agree with the price i think to me that that bag that big inside out whatever the never full it should be 1200 pounds more than that i'm not buying because yeah obviously if i really love that bag never full bag i would have bought it years ago but it just because something that i just never been on my wish list i never really liked it and i just don't feel it's right to charge people for that amount of money and for a bag like that on a different note with Chanel classic flap. I mean this one who remember this one like in the back in in its day how much this cost I mean I think I got this one in 2000 2009 yeah 2009 and uh, I bought it at Heathrow duty free so this is like a chocolate brown uh, in the caviar um, leather and uh, chocolate brown with silver platinum hardware and this, I think this is the medium size. I think I paid 1,750 for this bag. And this bag, how much is worth it now? How, how much they sell it now? 8,000 pounds. Is it 8,000 pounds? Yeah, from 1,770 to 8,000. I mean, that's, I would pay 8,000 for a Birkin, but not a Chanel. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a, I have some problems with Chanel charging that amount of money for a bag like this, you know, because this is like two thousand pounds, two thousand five hundred pounds. Yes, fair enough, three thousand. It was fine, but when it went beyond four thousand, five thousand, I think it just becomes a joke. I haven't bought any Chanel bags since. Oh, actually, <laughs> it's not that long ago. Um, I bought two bags during COVID from Chanel, but they are smaller ones, but not the classic flap because I don't feel like these classic flap bags, I need so many different ones. I, I just have this one, I'm just pretty content with it. And I've been using this every year. I use this on the auto cages, but not like, this is not like a day-to-day -day bag because the, the strap is, a little bit too short for my body because I got a chunky upper body and then this is raised up too high I wish it has maybe just 10 centimeters longer just drop drop like below my bust area that would be so good because sometimes if I wear some like maybe a coat just 
stick on my boobs and it just, just doesn't look very attractive. And again, in London, I wouldn't really have a bag sling like this because those bag snatchers, they know this is a Chanel bag. And uh, doubling it up is not too bad either. But again, walking around in London, I'm a little bit skeptical about just in London having a bag like this, just walk around, slinging around. And yes, I I haven't got a problem, um, you know, having designer bags, but I think just the crimes in London these days has become such a big issue for me. And I just feel on edge of having or using these designer bags and things that frivolously, if you know what I mean, just like carelessly, because when I'm out about in London, majority of the time I always have a crossbody bag or a bag that can be hold over my arms that, you know, close to me. I'll always have a zip or, you know, have a um, dust bag tie together make sure that it is not being violently get the bag snatched off you or you're being um the steal from you it's it's not about i mean the bag it, okay it's it's gone it's gone but it's these days your phone is in there your life is in there the, all the bank details personal details the photos we love and then the memories that we had you know it just the too much that it's being lost and that you just it's just a horrible feeling so that's why I just feel it just I'm on edge I mean it's such an eye-opening experience that when I went traveling in Japan and uh, South Korea and Hong Kong in May and June and July it, it was just like I use my Kelly bag I use my Hermes bags when I was out there and I wear my expensive jewelry and I just didn't feel like I'm being watched over or I'm being yeah mine are they're not extravagant you know massive really expensive pieces but over here even just the basic Kelly bag might get you into a little bit of trouble if you're just being too frivolously just leave it on the chair in a restaurant if you just want to go to a coffee shop you leave your bag there and you go to order a coffee no way but you can do that in japan no one is going to take your bag no one is going to take your purse if you leave it on the table or if you leave your phone on the table to reserve a seat you come back 10 minutes later you you got your drink come back to the, that seat your phone guaranteed to still be there same for hong kong and same for south korea but in london no way. I mean, the horrible stories that I've heard recently, it just, you know, since the past two, three years, it just how many people's Birkin is being stolen in Selfridges, in Harrods, in coffee shops around us, in Mayfair, in, in you know, from restaurants. I just become very um, saddened by this whole thing. I mean, some people get punched and kicked and the having a bleeding nose, you know, broken arms, you know, when they're Rolex or very expensive watches being, you know, marked from them. And I just think it just, it's horrible. It's such a horrible feeling. Maybe it is something that we just all have to be a little bit vigilant. And then sometimes using a bag like these, less popular bags, their resale value is very low in London these days. Maybe it's a safe bet. So that's another reason that why I want to start to use these bags again. And more so than the other bags. Because but majority of the time, you know, London is pretty safe. Touch wood that I've never been marked, I've never been stolen from, or I've never had you know in that any of those dangerous situations but I've heard plenty so it's not that it hasn't happened to me that that, that means it's all safe because you have to always watch over your shoulders and make sure that don't just walk around on your phone while you're out about and uh, yeah so I hope you know everyone go out safe and then um, can use whatever they have just enjoy that the joy that all the material things that bring us what's the point if you just buy every all of these things we love we ended up we're scared of using them because we're worried that they might get snatched on the street when we go out with them so it that would be such a horrible society or place to be living in or to be having a life in with these two bags and uh, please let me know if you think I should recolor this bag into maybe a black color maybe a, just a very dark color I think it will be I'll go for black and uh, 
this one I will start to use it if you have one of these bags please share leave a comment and uh, we can have a, a good chat about this so uh, that's it for today and I'm hoping this video is not too off-putting because of my venting <laughs> and uh, I, I, I get quite passionate about things you know and I get loud and louder but it there is something that is always good that we have this sort of discussions you know with how we experience life and then what, what we think about you know what's the latest and we keep each other informed i hope you enjoyed today's video and i will see you in my next one thank you bye bye